On this episode of the Catholic Echo Podcast from the Diocese of Youngstown, we're talking about rural ministry with Bishop David Bonner and Father Kevin Peters. Find more about this episode's topic, including articles from the Catholic Echo, at catholicecho.org slash podcast. And now, the host of the Catholic Echo Podcast, Father Jim Corda. Hello and welcome to the Catholic Echo Podcast. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda. Our show is brought to you by the annual Diocesan Appeal, the Catholic Communication Campaign, and Cumulus Media Youngstown. Joining me is Bishop David Bonner. Welcome. Thank you, Father Corda. You know, today we're going to talk about something totally different and unexpected. It's a really a new ministry that I think you began because of who we are as a diocesan church here in the Diocese of Youngstown, and that is the rural ministry. First of all, why did you start that, and what precipitated that? First of all, I'm very happy to talk about this because it's so exciting to me as someone who grew up in the suburbs talking about rural ministry. But, you know, I've been here in this diocese a little over three years now, and I do a lot of driving from Youngstown to Ashtabula, Youngstown to Kent and up to Aurora. I go to Columbiana and down to East Liverpool and of course down into Stark County, into Maslin. And in all my driving, which I pretty much do on my own, there's a lot to see and there's a lot to think about. There's a lot of time to think. And one of my observations is that this local church of Youngstown, the six counties of Youngstown, are more rural than I ever could have imagined. I mean, because as I drive, it's farm after farm after farm. And I've had a chance in my travels and in visiting certain parishes to get to know certain farmers, families that have farms of one kind or another. And of course, there are the fairs, which are very common here in Ohio, not something so common where I came from. And then somewhere out of the blue, I started receiving this newspaper called Farm and Dairy, which is printed out of Columbiana, which just really illustrates the whole rural life and the farm world and agriculture. And so it really opened my eyes. All of this opened my eyes to the need for us to minister to these families and to this realm, which I think can so easily be overlooked. And how would you see that ministry happening? Is it more of a one-on-one ministry? Is it more of a welcoming ministry? Is it an accompaniment ministry? Well, I think there's two levels to it. I think the first level, of course, is the local level with the respective pastor in that area. And the hope is that every pastor is going to be in tune and in touch with those families and be of support and service them. Maybe even having a a mass on a farm or having a prayer service or just advocating for them in some way. I think the other element to that is a more intentional coordination of that and support of that through a director of rural ministry. And some months ago, I appointed Father Kevin Peters as the director of rural ministry. Now, let me tell you how that happened. I One day, I just had a happen chance conversation with him, and he told me that he, he said he would love one day to just be in a, in a rural place and serve there. I never forgot that. You never forget these conversations as a bishop because <laughs> you never know when you're going to have to go knocking. Right. And when I called him, he was overjoyed. I mean, he's still doing what he does Mm -hmm. as a pastor in Stark County, but there's an intentional sense, and he's connected to the Rural Ministry Network nationally. He even did a retreat, Mm -hmm. I believe, back in February. And I think what he's doing, he's a cheerleader and someone who's helping to steer our pastors in the right way. Well, you know, as you were talking, one thing that, that comes to mind is how diverse our rural communities are, but how similar they are as well. You know, there's a lot of things that they have in common, and yet there's a lot of things that are unique to their experience. Why is it in our experience as ministers to understand the complexity of the people and the communities that we serve? Well, I think it all goes back to that sense of accompaniment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a matter of meeting people where they're at and walking with them and being of support and being attentive to whatever needs they might have. You know, it's interesting for us in our diocese, we have Route 11 that goes from the lake to the river. So it goes from Astabula County all the way down to Columbiana County to the Ohio River from Lake Erie. And there's a diversity that is there as well. I travel that road oftentimes, and I'm struck by just 
the variations that I see throughout the year, whether it's the seasons and the change of the seasons, whether it's people you encounter or different festivals, as you had mentioned, that go on. So there's a lot that we have to celebrate in our diocese. What would you like to tell the priests in our diocese in particular about rural ministry, especially those who might be serving in parishes in the city? There's a lot we can learn from our rural brothers and sisters. There's a work ethic, there's a discipline, there's a care for creation and nature that is something that our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has been attempting to open our eyes to. I think in many ways, these communities, these families can become classrooms for us. You know, the other thing, as you were talking, that comes to mind is that the deep roots that are there. Many of these people in rural boundaries of our counties and dioceses really have deep roots. These farms or or institutions have been passed on from generation to generation. How difficult is that sometimes for young people to be part of that, and yet there's a sense that their parents want them to continue this work that has been in the family for generations? That's always hard. Just looking in my life, my dad's father was a butcher. I think his father was a butcher, and of course my dad was a butcher. None of my brothers and I are butchers. <laughs> so I think everyone has to chart their road, listen to God's plan for them. But it is hard because there's so much of an investment given to a farm, whatever type of farm it is. There's a real investment, a lot of times 24-7, and that's hard to walk away from. Talk about the word ministry. You know, it's rural ministry. What is that ministry basically entail? Is that always sacramental? Is that ministry of accompaniment? What do we mean by ministry in the rural community? I think it's a presence. Mm. It's an awareness. If ever there was a place where one could live in their own little world, it's probably a farm Mm. because the work, the demands. And I think what we want to attempt to do with this rural ministry is to let them know that they're part of our story, that we're part of their story, that we have much to learn from each other and to give to each other, and that, you know, we're stronger by their presence. And we want to certainly give a shout out to Father Kevin Peters, who will be with us in our next couple segments to talk about his experience, who basically is in the city and in the rural community in his assignments. So he shares uh, really both of those worlds. Thank you, Bishop, for instituting this important ministry here in the diocese and for lifting that up today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Did you know that the Catholic Echo magazine is delivered 10 times per year to 52,000 Catholic households in Northeastern Ohio? That's more than 150,000 people. And the Catholic Echo website, catholicecho.org, has been averaging 30,000 views per month since it launched in February 2023. Advertise your business, special event, or service with the Catholic Echo in print or online. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. Advertising discounts are available for Catholic institutions as well as for businesses that commit to five or ten issues in a year. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org or visit the Advertising tab at catholicecho.org for more information. Hello, I'm Bishop Dave Bonner of the Diocese of Youngstown. At Easter, we recall the presence of the risen Lord among us. Over 2,000 years ago, he told his disciples, Remember, I am with you always, even to the end of time. As we celebrate his resurrection, may his gifts of love and joy fill your hearts and homes this Easter season. May our thanks and celebration of his dying and rising give us abundant life now and always. The first Sisters of the Humility of Mary came together in France in 1854. In their rule, approved by the Bishop of Nancy in 1858, the founding Sisters gave expression to their faith and their lived experience. The entire community came to the United States of America in 1864, including nine professed sisters, two novices, three orphan girls, and Father John Joseph Begel, the spiritual director for the little community, and their ecclesial maison. 
In regard to the Eucharist, their rule, translated into English in 1877, clearly stated that they will love and serve Jesus Christ in his real and natural body, that is to say the Holy Eucharist, in his temples. And they will serve him in his mystic body, their neighbors, who are his members. The personal experiences of the First Sisters of the Humility of Mary was one of wonder and reception of God's gratuitous gift of love in the person of Jesus Christ. This lived experience was also one of meeting Jesus in the sacrament of the Eucharist and of meeting and serving Him in the sacrament of their neighbor. With me now is Father Kevin Peters, who is the Director of Rural Life and Ministry for the Diocese of Youngstown. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Father Cora. You know, this is kind of a new venture for you. You were appointed in July of 2023 to this new ministry, and you spent most, if not all, of your ministry in city or center city parishes. So this is a new venture for you, this rural life and right. ministry. Talk about what's been new for you in ministry in this whole regards of rural life? Well, actually, it really was a surprise when the bishop asked if I would do that because I was in the city of Youngstown Mm -hmm. at the time. Didn't see much of a connection between my current assignment at the time and Mm -hmm. rural ministry. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that I have found out, though, in the course of this past, you know, eight to ten months, is that there are very few parishes in our diocese that aren't somehow connected with rural life, farm Mm -hmm. life, even in Youngstown, even yeah. at St. Angela Marici, there's a family who raises pigs. Mm. We had farmers even in that parish in Youngstown. Yeah. If you look around the diocese, it seems mm-hmm. like there's virtually no parish that wouldn't have somebody involved in rural life in the diocese. Even in downtown Canton, St. Mm-hmm. John, the mm-hmm. Basilica, and St. Pete, there are parishioners that come in from that southern part mm-hmm. of the county. They're mm-hmm. all farmers. So even in those city centers, rural ministry is a reality for our diocese. Yeah. So we're very rural. And I understand that when you became the new director of rural ministry, that you were given a subscription to a magazine that was called Catholic Rural Life. And I think it's celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. So, you know, rural ministry and rural life is really part of the makeup of who we are as Americans. And so has that given you new insight? Yes. We've become now, I think, the 28th chapter Mm. of the Catholic Rural Life Mm. Association. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Diocese of Youngstown is its own chapter now of that. We have chaplains and officers and chair people. And Mm -hmm. as a part of that organization, they really provide the resources that are helpful for parishes and pastors that minister to rural families, farm families. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that that is really going to be the center of this office of Catholic rural life and ministry, Mm -hmm. being able to provide resources the pastors can choose if they want to. They've identified farming families or rural families in their parish, Mm -hmm. that there are a lot of resources available to help them in their spiritual life. Retreats, formational programs, social action initiatives, Mm -hmm. resources like from Laudato Si and Laudate Deum. There are a lot of resources available, and they're, they're there for our asking, and that's what I think we're going to provide. You know, as a diocese, I often think whenever I travel Route 11, going from Mm -hmm. the river to the lake and vice versa, you run into a lot of patches around our diocese that have farms and Mm -hmm. farmers, and you can see for miles almost farms and farmland. Why is it so strange for us who are in the city to think that there's people who are living on the outskirts and running these places that provide so much for us Mm -hmm. in the city. And we don't always think of that because farmers and farmland is really crucial to who we are in our very existence. Right. And I think we probably do tend to live in our bubbles. You know, we Mm -hmm. get surrounded by the things that are important to us, and that's what we focus Mm -hmm. on. And, and it's not only urbanites and suburbanites that don't have that connection with the rural part of our community. The farmers and the people that live in the rural lands don't have that connection with the suburbanites either. Sure. That would be another initiative of this office is to help make that connection, to have an appreciation between both communities of the importance of one another. Yeah. 
And, and it's not only north to south, it's east to west, too. It's mm-hmm. all across our diocese. Mm-hmm. One area that I'd like us to talk about, you mentioned it just briefly a few minutes ago, is that area of social justice. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't always think of that in terms of rural life. You know, we think of social justice working in, in the city, mm-hmm. but how does it manifest itself in rural life? Well, for example, the federal farm bill. Mm. The federal farm bill covers all sorts of topics. The WIC programs, just farming practices, you know, safe farming practices, Mm -hmm. feeding the poor. There are all sorts of issues that that farm bill covers Mm -hmm. and issues that touch both the urban, suburban, and farm communities, brings them together. We're involved in an issue now regarding renewable sources of energy. Mm -hmm. It's kind of touchy because... Renewable energy, obviously, is something that we support and promote. But at the same time, we expect people that are providing that to be responsible. And we have some issues now where there's some very difficult things on the table now in terms of encroaching upon church Mm -hmm. land and using up valuable and viable agricultural land for Mm -hmm. the sake of thousands of acres of solar panels. On one hand, you don't Mm -hmm. want to put down that notion of renewable energy, but Also, it needs to be done responsibly. That's another thing that this office right now is currently involved with. Sure. What can we in the city be more aware of, those in rural life and community, and what can we do to be supportive of that? I think the first step is to introduce each other, Mm. to make that connection between the people that provide food, provide crops and stuff like that Mm. for our use and for our good to make that connection between the rural community and the urban community so that we can see the relationship, first of all. Mm -hmm. And then mutual support efforts come from that relationship. The other area that I'd like us to talk about is kind of the pace of rural life. You know, pace and time and life in the city always seems to be so Mm fast-paced. When you get out into the country, so to speak, life tends to slow down. Is that true or is that a fallacy? I think it's true, but we're all guided by different calendars. Mm. In the city, we have schedules that are very lockstep. But there's another schedule, there's another calendar, there's another time frame that exists in the rural community Mm -hmm. that can be just as hectic, just as fast-paced, you know, working from dawn to dusk, trying to accomplish things that need to be done in a timely manner. It's all at the mercy of nature. Mm -hmm. There's just a, a different kind of calendar. Both of them can make like hectic. It's just a different lifestyle. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but we need to take a quick break. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Did you know that the Catholic Echo magazine is delivered 10 times per year to 52,000 Catholic households in Northeast Ohio? That is more than 150,000 people. And the Catholic Echo website, catholicecho.org, has been averaging 30,000 views per month since it launched in February 2023. Advertise your business, special event, or service with the Catholic Echo in print or online. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. Advertising discounts are available for Catholic institutions, as well as for businesses that commit to five or ten issues in a year. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. Or visit the Advertising tab at catholicecho.org for more information. Christopher Minutes, thoughts on making every day count. Here's Monsignor Jim Lasanti. On February 3rd, 1966, U.S. Navy Captain Gerald Coffey was flying a reconnaissance mission off the coast of North Vietnam. When he lost control of his aircraft, he was captured on the ground by North Vietnamese forces. He would spend the next seven plus years in prison. Recalling the experience, the former POW says, the key to my survival was faith, faith in God above all, but also faith in others and in myself. I learned to appreciate myself and my own humanity. In order to stay focused on his faith, Captain Gerald Coffey created a visual reminder for himself. He says, the first two words I scratched on my cell wall made all the difference. They were two words with an equal sign between them. God equals strength. My friends, no matter what your circumstances, you can find strength in God. The Catholic Echo is the media arm of the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown, and it seeks to inform and entertain Catholics in our six-county diocese 
by forging stronger connections to our parish communities and highlighting the many blessings of Catholic life in our region. If you have a story idea for the Catholic Echo magazine, podcast, or website, send an email to catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. We'd love to hear your ideas. I am Marino. Je suis Marino. I am Marino. I believe that we are all connected to each other, and that is the gift of compassion that unites us and makes us one. It doesn't matter what language, culture, or tradition we come from. We can share compassion wherever we are. Mary Knoll, an American Catholic organization of priests and brothers, has been reaching out to those in need for nearly 100 years in 26 countries throughout the world. Mary Knoll dedicates 86 cents of every dollar donated to their programs, and with your help, they can do more. Missioners, workers, volunteers, supporters, we are all Mary Knoll. I am Mary Knoll. Yo soy Mary Knoll. I'm Father Mike. And I am Mary Knoll. 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 Welcome back to our show. With me is Father Kevin Peters, who is the Diocesan Director of Rural Life and Ministry. We've been talking about rural life and the community and so forth. What I'd like us to focus on now is that sense of who these people are in rural life. Let's kind of help us put a face to these people. They provide so much for us around the country. What is it that we need to know about them and their life? I do think their reality is grounded in something different than our reality is grounded in in urban life. Mm -hmm. We're focused on things in the city that might not be as important in the country and vice versa. We had a live nativity at one of our parishes out in the western part of the diocese. Mm -hmm kind of a a fun encounter because one of the servers had his goat with him Mm -hmm. and then two other little girls were wrangling a sheep Mm -hmm. and the little girls had sheep ears on Mm -hmm. and I was trying to make the point that there was more than one sheep here you know (laughs) referring to little girls Mm -hmm. and the server standing next to me said well yeah but this is a goat Mr. Rural Ministry (laughs) wasn't even Father Rural Ministry Uh Mr. Rural (laughs) and uh, so obvious to him you know Mm -hmm. that goats have tails and hair and sheep don't it's kind of fun the things that just noticing the things that they pick up on Right. And I was talking about something totally different. And mm-hmm. This kid decided he needed to instruct me on the difference between sheep yeah. and goats. And I'm glad he did because I sure. wouldn't have occurred to me. I'm from the city. I recently heard something on public radio where they were talking about how rural life and farm life is really changing in the United States. And in particular here, even in Ohio, we have fewer and fewer people in farms who are actually handing on their livelihood to their children because... Their children are not interested in taking on the family farm, or they have other desires, or they've moved away. So farm life really has kind of fallen on hard times around us. Plus, it's rather expensive to be a farmer. Equipment is expensive. Maintaining crops and so forth Mm -hmm. is expensive. You have to base everything on nature. Mm -hmm. Is God going to provide the sun and the rain and so forth? So there's a lot of complexities in rural life that we really don't know about. Mm -hmm. What can we do to be more sensitive to all that? And you and your new ministry, what can you do to be more sensitive to that? I would have to say that this topic is still a very new thing for me. Mm -hmm. I haven't really had a chance to really dig into that, into the community like that to, you know, be able to really speak intelligently about Mm -hmm. the differences between now and then in terms of farming. But I would assume that there are a lot more possibilities available for young people. Mm -hmm. A lot of different things catch their attention. You know, they respond to the things Mm -hmm. that entice them. They do move on. The economy definitely has a huge impact on farm life, and there are those who just decide it's too rigorous, it's too difficult to pursue that as a young person, so Mm -hmm. they move on to other things. 
Also, there's a certain part of our diocese where farm life is being threatened by industrialization. Mm -hmm. And fighting big corporations, stuff like that, is just something that doesn't seem to be of interest to maybe right. younger people. Yeah. And um, older farmers, the, the ones that are generation after generation, find it very difficult to fight big mm -hmm. industry and mm -hmm. government you know, yeah. in order to keep their farms. There's a possibility that an entire farming community can be decimated by industrialization sure. just in our Columbiana County. Mm -hmm. I think the diocese offering support in situations mm -hmm. like that, this Office of Rural Life and Ministry offering support and guidance, yeah. speaking up on behalf of farmers that are up against you know, mm -hmm. the, the big guns, mm -hmm. that's something that we can do to help support their efforts and, and keep farm life viable mm -hmm. in our diocese. How important is the church in the life of the rural life? They're small communities, and so they know everyone in their community. Mm -hmm. How important is the church in that community? Well, there's a very visible, tangible spiritual life in the rural mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. There's a sense of wonder and awe regarding mm -hmm. the land and that total dependence on nature and on God. Spirituality is, I'm not saying it's not strong in the urban communities, mm -hmm. but it's visible and tangible in rural communities. Yeah. They crave spiritual formation, spiritual uh, engagements, prayer services, mm -hmm. farm masses. They want that as a part of what strengthens them in their resolve to trust in God for their well-being. This is a revived ministry. We had an office of rural life and ministry in the past. This is revived by the bishop. It's significant. And it's important to say that even though this is a, a newly revived office, it's, mm -hmm. it's not new in our diocese. There are priests who have been very committed to rural life, and those priests are who I have relied on for insights and for help. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in order to build this ministry up in our diocese. We know that there's a national conference that provides help and support and insight and education and updates for those in your position. So how does that work for our diocese? How are we tied into the national group? Well, the National Catholic Rural Life Organization does provide the conference to call us together. So relationship is a key thing, getting to know who's doing what in different places. There's a lot going on even just in our state, between mm -hmm. the diocese mm -hmm. and our state in terms of providing ministry for rural families. Yeah. The Catholic Rural Life Association out of Minnesota is the one that we belong mm -hmm. to as a chapter. They provide annual retreats for priests that are involved with rural life. Mm -hmm. These organizations provide the resources that we need to help our parishes mm -hmm. and our pastors minister to the rural families in their parishes. To identifying those families, identifying those people, that may be something that doesn't occur to a lot of pastors. They're there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, as we promote resources through the dialogue, and website. We have a page on the website. Mm -hmm. To be able to promote those kind of resources mm -hmm. might encourage pastors to take a closer look at their parish and identify those rural families there that are in need of spiritual support. Well, Father Kevin Peters, Director of Rural Life and Ministry for the Diocese, thanks for assuming this new role. Uh, you've been in it for about a year, and we know that you'll continue to provide support to those rural communities that really are part of who we are as church here in the Diocese of Young South. It's been a privilege. Thank you. For more information, you can go to catholicecho.org. The Catholic Echo Podcast is a production of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Youngstown in cooperation with Cumulus Media Youngstown. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda. Have a blessed day, and may God be with you.